Good morning, a little bit of amigurumi today. I'm going to be creating this little angel here. I'm saying Christmas-ish themes. She doesn't have to be a Christmas angel. Of course, she could be a guardian angel. She could just be a little bit of fun. It doesn't matter what you decide you want her to be. Now, the reason I did her is because I took my book, which is quite an old book now, but it is by me. Um, and on the back of there, you can see there is an angel, very similar, but remember these are done in, in anchor number eight. So the size you see there is the size they come out. So I decided just to revamp a little bit, to make a slightly larger girl, uh, make it in double knit so it's easier to get sort of for most people to do if you do want to shrink it down. As I say, this was done with an eight, cotton number eight. And it was, I'm just trying to think, it was a one millimetre crochet hook. We're using a bit bigger than that today. So it was just a little bit of inspiration. I was trying to think what to do when I got my book out and I thought, well, why not? Let's have a look. So I'm going to move that out of the way. Now, as you can see, there's something in the corner here. I'm sharing my desk a little bit. I'm going to move this to show you. Ta -da! A glass of water there as well. I am sharing my desk with my son's new uh, 3d printer it is hopefully not going to be staying there permanently but it's not hurting at the moment so let's have a look what we've got as i say we've got this little angel here i have some double knit yarn this is actually a baby glitz by king cole so it's a little bit finer not a lot but these are just style craft double knit yarns which are great these are the colors i chose you don't have to do them in these colors of course she doesn't even have to be an angel you could change it make it into a little fairy perhaps with the wings change your color coordinations on it it is entirely up to you it is just a basic pattern for you to have a play with and take it from there i have some toy grade stuff in here make sure you do buy the proper stuff for that i have my needles i have my magnets that's now stuck to my scissors with my uh, uh, pussycat uh, needle minder there i have some beads here i did use pearls here but i ran out of pearls i've just thrown a bead on the side haven't i and i've got a little stitch mark and i've got two little blue beads for her eyes now again think about who it's going to be for if it's a gift for someone uh or if it, for a younger person most of my products are not designed as toys but obviously children over a certain age they should be safe but think about things like this you don't want little ones popping them in the mouth or you don't want pets getting hold of them things like that so i think you could actually just stitch the details on if you wanted to again entirely up to you so we might as well just get started i've made it also all in one now originally i'd separated it so you were stitching these things pieces on here at the neck and at the hair well i thought well let's try and do it all in one less stitching up is always good so we don't need that at the moment we don't need that we won't need those and we're going to be starting with the white as you know i like my glittery whites and that is what we have here so i'll just undo a little bit before we get going it is just a typical amigurumi style that we're going to be using so we need our slip knot onto the hook not too tight i didn't tell you what size hook it was it's a 3.5 millimeter and again don't forget i am using uk terms as far as the pattern is concerned i have my pattern written here so you can see a little bit of paper there and a pen and we're going to start by doing two chain like i do with all mine and then into this first chain you're going to make six double crochets so we have one two three four five and six don't worry about that loosening we're going to tighten that up in a second let me just pull it up that's why if you've got a slip knot and a correct slip knot that is what you'll be able to do so they are important now into each of these six double crochets we're going to do two double crochets so make sure to count from the back to get the first one so we go one two three four five and six because it's very easy to try and go in before that one so count from the back and you will find the first one now you need to make sure like that i'm just doing now that you pick up both pieces and we're going to do two double crochets into that first one two into the second one two into the third 
two into the fourth, two into number five, and the last one, two into number six. And I want to tighten up that slip knot now because it is moving a bit. Can you see we get a little hole? So pull it tight, not too tight so it snaps, but tight enough so it closes that hole up for you. We're going to go for two double crochets again in each. So at the moment, we've got 12 stitches. If we do two in each, again, obviously we're going to come out with 24. So here we go. I'm not bothering with a stitch marker at the moment. We're only counting 12 stitches. So that's two in number one. Two double crochets into each one, remember. That's two. That's three. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nearly there, nine, there's three more, that's ten, there's two more in each one, that's eleven, and that's is 12. So we now got 24 stitches. You may now want to pop in our stitch marker. Now I know I'd said she doesn't have to be a Christmassy one but I thought well, we're thinking Christmassy aren't we? So I've got a little wreath one here that I got from What Must Have Made. I need to think about getting some other Christmas ones. I don't have many Christmas stitch markers um, and I don't know whether any of you would be interested but I'm going to be popping some of my own stitch markers together using my Octopudding logo. I've got some little shapes made. I've just got to produce them into stitch markers now and a couple of our other original characters that we've created uh, from my daughter's drawings and a friend's digital work as well so we're now going to do one double crochet into each stitch all the way around so we've got 24 stitches you could count if you want I've just decided to use the stitch marker and we're going to have six rounds of that so off we go I've got my pen and paper ready this is round number one the other reason I pop the stitch marker in is obviously I can carry on just talking to you if you're going to be fast forwarding now if you're a little bit quicker just uh, fast forward and pause and um, do your six rounds and I'll see you in a second if you're staying with me, by all means, listening to me chattering along, if you're finding it's a little bit fast for yourselves, you can always slow it down in the settings, although my voice will sound a little odd. Or, as I say, you know you're doing six rounds, so grab that pen and paper, just pause me now, do your six rounds and come back to me. So this is just round one. It looks like we've got some sun out here now, which is good because I've put some washing in. And I would like to get it out. Uh, they're talking about possible storms, etc, etc. And as I just wash the bed in, I really need to get it out on the line. Right, this is round two. So I've just marked off my round one. I know I'm talking Christmas and people are probably going, oh no, 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 not just yet. But we're in August. And yes, if you celebrate Christmas, it is counting down. But as I say, it doesn't have to be a Christmas angel. There's no reason why she can't be anything or just a little doll shape, really. Might be a little nice gift to give somebody as a guardian angel. I think I probably will put on the heading of the video a Christmas angel sort of to sort of people know sort of where to look for Christmas projects more than anything else. Right, almost round with round number two. She doesn't take too long to do and like I said because it's almost all in one it avoids a lot of sewing up so that sort of speeds up sort of the process at the end it's only just adding the details right another round of double crochets i'm actually going to move my stitch marker up because remember amigurumi works in a spiral system so you do have to watch your positioning so usually a good idea to move your stitch marker up maybe every three possibly four rounds depending on how you feel about it now we've started at the bottom of the angel which i'm sure you probably guessed um no particular reason people do start in different positions 
I just find it an easier position to start with with my work. Right, so this is round three. I can hear the dog outside the door again. She was laid in here, bought her a new bed to sit in the craft room and she was settled down lovely. And I thought, oh, she might just stay there. But as soon as I get the camera out and put all the settings up, she decides she wants to go back out. But now I can hear her pottering about outside the door. So she clearly does want to come back in, but uh, she's going to have to wait a little bit, I'm afraid. Holly dog will not be too long. So that was round three. So we're halfway there. As I said, there's six rounds. But can you see the shape of the bottom of the angel coming? So off we go for round number four. Yes, at the moment I'm thinking Christmas, but then I'm also thinking Halloween. And I'm like, ah, I don't know where to start. Because it is going really fast. I know the pandemic has affected a lot of things. You know, imagine time going slower, perhaps. Perhaps if you have been completely isolated, it probably has been a lot slower for you. Um, but I know for myself, because I've been doing sort of for helping out other people and doing bits and bobs, it's basically been non-stop as normal. So my time is definitely feels like it's shifting really fast. I don't know whether you can hear the dog, I can hear her claws. Oh no, she's laid down now. I can hear she's laid down outside the door. So round number five we are on. absolutely love this yarn as you know i use it whenever i'm doing something white it's never just plain white it's always sparkly white got to be sparkly white i like sparkles i just don't like the color white much i think it's hard sort of color to work with you think using a darker yarn is harder because obviously you can't see where the hook's going but I, I, I'm not that comfortable with white yarn either. I just think it sort of glares at you a little bit. It was because this has got a bit of sparkle. It makes it a bit more interesting. Right, we are round again. So that is number five. I'm not going to mark it down because I know there's only one more round. So one more round. And we're going to be looking at some decreasing. I say I've got quite a few ideas. I think there might be a Halloween project. And another chocolate orange cover coming. I do like my chocolate orange covers. I'm getting quite a list of them now. Oh, nearly. Also got some dolly projects on. I did make a new style uh, smart doll hat yesterday. I don't know whether to do it as a tutorial or whether to just up as a pattern i can't make up my mind um but i have a few designs in my head so for you guys who crochet for the dolls there is some more projects i do need to do some cindy's as well cindy projects right we are round we have a decrease round we're going to decrease just four stitches now we're going to do two together and then four individual ones one two three and four yeah and you're going to repeat that four times so we had 24 stitches and we're aiming for 20 so two together remember we pull it through but we don't finish it we go into the next one we pull it through you should have three on the hook you're going to pull it through all three that is your two together we're now going to do four individual ones one two three and four we're going to do two together again take it in pull it through, take it in the next one, pull it through, we have three, we pull it through all three, four individual ones, one, two, three and four, we're going to do two together again, and then fours, one, two, three and four, our last decrease, two double crochets together, and our last four. One, 
two, three and four. So we're nicely lined up with that stitch marker there as well. We're going to just have a double crochet round. So we've got 20 stitches. I'm going to move this little stitch marker up now. So as you decrease again, it will change its position. And I'm not going to count, but if you want to count, you should have 20 stitches. And we're just going to go around and I'm just going to aim to get to back to where the stitch marker is. We have another decrease round after this one, very similar. See, we're already halfway up her body. It is quite quick, what we on? We're on 15 minutes. Like I said, first few minutes, it was just me talking though, wasn't it? Right, so I'm back to my stitch marker. I'm going to have another decrease round as I just mentioned, but we're going to be decreasing by five, taking it down to 15 stitches. So we're going to do two together and then two individual, repeating that five times. So two together and two stitches. One, two. So that's our first one. Two together and two individuals. That's our second lot two together two individuals that's our third just under the yarn a bit third we need two together two individuals that is number four so we should have enough space for one more that looks pretty promising there two together and two individuals so we are back round to our stitch marker and as you can see it's starting to shape round. I'm just going to push that bit in, see that it's getting in my way a little bit. And we are now, oh we are now ready to change colour. I'm sure she's come out smaller than the No she hasn't, by the time I've got stuff in it, that seems to be about right. So we're going to change colour now and we're going to be going for a skin tone of whatever your choice is. And so I just picked out sort of bog standard peachy sort of colour um, so let's see where we're going with this we are now going to do another double crochet round so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push my hook in I'm not going to use that at all I'm just pushing my hook in hope you can see what I've done so I'm going to grab the new yarn and I'm going to pull it through and continue it as a stitch okay now I'm going to tie those two in a second because they're going to be inside so we get away with it. So I'm just going to do a couple of stitches. So that's just four stitches or three stitches I think it was. And I'm going to tie these two and tuck them in and get them out of the way. That stitch marker's annoying now because it's rattling every time I put it down. So just pop the stuff that in. It works as a little bit of stuffing as well. I think that looks nice and even there. Oh, I'm not sure about that. Can you see the little gap there? I clearly left that a little bit loose when I started. So I'm just going to take it out a little bit. Shouldn't problem is because I've tied it off now. It's usually a good idea not to tie it off before you know, before you're happy with it. All right, there we go. I'm not quite sure why that stitch was like that, but off we go. Again, tighten it up a little bit, that's what we want. So just one double crochet into each of the 15 double crochets. I know I've mentioned before, I won't edit if I go wrong, because I think it's important for everybody to know, well, we all go wrong. There, There is no perfect person out there doing it, well, there might be, but um, they're very lucky if they are. And if they find it that easy and they never make a mistake. But I think that's unlikely. Right, so we're almost round. You can see when you're round now because of the colour change. So we're now going to be doing an in an increase. And in, yes, an increase round. Because obviously her face needs to come out. Just a tiny weeny bit. So we're going to be doing two double crochets in one. That's your increase. And then one double crochet in the next two from that. So the first one. It's going to be two in the same one that's our increase and then we're going to have two individual 
and we're going to do that all the way around to a two in one, a one in two, a two in one, a one in two. Yep, I thought I'd done two together then. Right, we're going to do two in the next one, one in the next two. Almost there. Two in the next one. And then one in the next two. And we're round again. We're going to need a couple of double crochet rounds to finish off the height for the face area. So I have written two down there, but I for some reason I've crossed one out. So we'll see. I'm not sure whether it's two or three. So here's the first one of just one double crochet in each double crochet until we get around to the beginning. The stitch marker is still there, but to be honest, you can usually see where you've changed the colour of your yarn, even if it's only the tiniest of sort of differences, you will see it. Put this round. I think I should have put a smaller stitch marker in. The ones I've had made, I've tried to make as tiny as I can because obviously, like myself, a lot of you are working with smaller scales. Although, maybe they're probably about that size, but because they're a light acrylic, they're a bit easier to work with. So that's one round. Second round of just double crochets. Round we go. And then I'm actually going to have a look at this one in comparison. I think it might just be the two. It's weird because when it's not stuffed, it, it looks very different um, to the finished product. So sometimes you're like, have I done it? Haven't I done it? But I'm pretty confident we're okay here. Yeah, I'm at last getting my hair cut today. Oh dear me. It's nice to have long hair and it's literally to the base of my back now, but I can't do it anything with it it's really hard to brush it just ends up in a bun on top of my head so i'm having quite a bit cut off now i'm not going short but i think i'm gonna have a good like sort of four inches off and sort of uh, be able to have it a bit short and be able to wear it down let's have a look actually that's okay so it was just two rounds so we're ready to change color again so again hair color is optional whatever you like to do I think I just, again, picked a pretty bog standard uh, colour there. Right, here we go. In fact, I'm taking that stitch marker out because it's getting in my way personally. So I'm going to pop it over there. So I've not done anything with that stitch. That's just the last stitch. So I'm just going to go into the next one. I'm going to grab my yarn and pull it through. I'm not going to tie them together straight away this time. I'm going to make sure my stitch is right. And I'm just going to pull it through as a stitch. And we're going to do a few. And then I'm going to look at it and decide whether it's tight enough. I think that looks tight enough. I'm just trying to decide. I've paused in a minute because I'm just trying to decide whether to try something with the stitch i don't know whether it's worth let's have an experiment bear with me i'm just taking that back out because i've been sort of trying different ways so obviously we don't want to see sort of where the yarn changing is i'm not sure no i'm not i'm not going to play with it now i'm going to have a play on my own and then um, i'll let you guys know if it works i don't want to sort of spend too much time thinking about it today for you so whichever way you prefer to join your yarn some of you may have a way better way than i've got anyway so we're just doing one double crochet in each double crochet all the way around in our new color now i've got about halfway now i'm gonna tie it so i'm gonna have a look if you pull that as well you can sort of work out i think that looks neat enough doesn't it so we can now tie it we're going to have to stuff it soon as well because obviously we're going to be decreasing for the top of the head and if you decrease too much you can't get the stuffing in. So we're going to shove all this inside. 
be careful when you're shoving yarn in because these are quite pale colours it's not going to show through but say if you're doing a darker hair and the yarn gets underneath here and the but sort of behind not behind the stuffing it will sometimes show so sometimes it might be worth cutting those bits off should we put a bit of stuffing in now we will let's see let's pad her bottom out yep yeah, we'll leave it at that for now until we've decreased a bit so i was just doing one double crochet in each one When you've got the stuffing in it does make it a little bit harder to hold but uh, you've got to pop it in at some point so you're gonna have to get used to it right so that is just a double crochet round now we've obviously let's have a double check see how many we have another one that's just a double crochet round so off we go She looks a little bit weird until you put the sort of little tiara on when you do her hair. She looks like she's got like a funny bump on top of her head. But it does work when you either, but you could pop a ribbon around it or a bow on it. Or as I say, I've just popped some beads round. So this is just another double crochet round. If you've kept your stitch marker in, make sure you move it up a little bit. That's almost the second just double crochet round. Right, I am round. I'm now going to be starting some decreasing to shape the top of her head. So we're going to have two double crochets together, then two individual ones times five. So it's bringing it back to 15. So we're going to have a two and we're going to have two individuals. That's our first one. I've got a stitch marker in now, so I need to count. So that's two together, two individuals. That's our second one. Two together, two individuals. That's our third. Just need to undo my yarn a bit. That was number three, wasn't it? So two individuals, two together. What am I talking about then? Two individuals. That was our fourth. This is my last one. Two together. Two individuals. Right, so we're round again. We're starting to get a smaller hole now, so I think we ought to put a little bit more stuffing in there. Don't overstuff where the neck area is, but do make it firm enough that it doesn't go floppy as well. Amazing how much stuffing these things take. I know when you make the items, let me take that out a second, you make items to sell and people will look at something. And I mean, a bomb fat crochet does take a while, even though people sort of uh, think, oh, they find it easy, it'll be all right. You know, give them a few pound. But it's the expense of things like stuffing, to be honest. It's little bits and um, bobs that sort of add up. I think that'll about do for her body. She's going to need a little bit more for her face to come out, but again, we'll do a little bit more of the hair first. Right, back on the hook. Where were we? Another decrease round, two together, and then three individuals times three. So it's going to take it down quite a bit. Try and keep these two together it's really tight. So that's two together, tighten in between, and then one, two, and three. So that's our first one two together and three individuals one two and three one more time two together and then one two it will look like you've gone past, but that's because of the nature of decreasing with amigurumi. I think we definitely need to get some more stuff in, in now. I have got some more stuff into the side if I need any more. Because it's really hard to judge. You'd be surprised how fast you can get through a bag of stuff in. Let's have a look, because I don't overstuff, because it can make them look a bit funny as well. I don't think that's too bad. 
yeah i think that will do for now because we're gonna have two double crochet rounds there is 12 stitches now and we're just going to go round twice so i'm going to count rather than stitch mark again harder to hold because of this stuffing two three four halfway there seven eight nine ten eleven and twelve so that's our first time round as i said this does make our head look rather peculiar another time round then so one two three Four, five, six, it's hard, definitely harder to hold, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and one more, twelve. So we are now going to be getting ready to close up. So you need to put in whatever stuffing you need to finish off with now. There's stuffing pulling out there. Be careful, don't pull the stuffing through when you're actually crocheting. Let me grab this other piece of stuffing over here. Right, I want to put it in bit by bit, I think, so I don't want to put too much in. I say it does look a little weird. Looks like she's got a very long head. One more. I'm going to put that final bit in. I'm going to push it in. Because the thing is, if you push it further down, when you finish, you can just sort of uh, give it a roll like you'll see me do and it pushes it all back up. So I've pushed it away from there because otherwise you catch it and you do pull bits you do get little bits like that pulling through and they're a pain to get rid of right it's just going to be two together till close now so you need to make sure these are tight so that's our two together pull it tight two together pull it tight oh can you hear the cat now two together and pull it tight and pull it tight and we get another one in i think we are we might be able to sometimes it's really hard to get the last two in you can stitch it up if you need be right we've just done it just done it there we go so passing that off Pulling it through and let's grab this needle and we might as well get it stitched up now before we start the wings but look at that because it's all in one all we've got is one strand i've got some can you see that orange bit of yarn on there i've been using this orange and black sort of variegated um to do this smart doll hat and so it's all like well it's not necessarily halloween but um it's those sort of colors that are associated with that time right so i'm just gonna Take it through a few times. This is where you can neaten it up if you've got a bit of a space or anything like that. It's where a few darning skills definitely come in use. And then I'm just going to push it through the body a few times to get rid of it. And then what I was referring to before is you give it a good roll, pushes all the stuffing into place. And there we have her. As I said, she looks very peculiar at the moment, but when the actual band goes round the hair, we'll be fine. Just looking at that head now, do you think I should have done another one? She'll be fine, she'll be fine. Right, we're going to move that to one side and we're going to come back to my nice glittery white for the wings and I'm going to take some time now this is the second attempt so I'm hoping it's going to clip together okay I don't know what I did but I somehow read my own pattern wrong it's because I can't read my own writing because it's so messy I so might be able to see from that right slip knot on two chain five double crochets into that first one one two 
three, four, and five. We're going to do three chain. One, two, three. We're going to turn our work. We're going to do a treble into the base of that chain. So that's the first of the five stitches we did. Then we're going to do two in each of the remaining four stitches. So we've got one treble, two treble in the first one. That's actually the second one, isn't it? Um, this is number three. Two trebles in it. So it's just two trebles in each one. Number four. Oops, squeaky wool. And into my last one. It's always a little bit hard to find. There we go. And two trebles. One. Two. So I think you can see if we pull that tighter ish, but it doesn't really matter. You can see you've got like a little half circle y sort of shape. So you're going to do three chain again and you're going to turn again. And once again, like before, you're going to do two trebles in every single one. So the first one's one into the base, because that is a stitch. And then two into each one. So we're now expanding, and we should have 20 stitches now when we've done this. So this is second attempt, so I'm hoping I'm going to be able to splice them both together. Otherwise you might see a funny sort of uh, skip from, from the angel to the wings. So apologies if that happens already. We're almost there. Don't forget that very last one's that chain though, because it's too easy to miss. It's also hard to get in because with a chain you don't again want to get sort of like a skinny bit because otherwise it'll be loose. So I need two. That's not gone in the same stitch, has it? I don't know. There we go. Two in these wings are fated, aren't they? So again, you can still see, but we've also got a little bit of a curve going off there as well. The next one's even easier. We're going to do our three chain and turn again. One, two, and three, and turn. One into the base. That's an increase. But now we're just going to do one in every single one apart from the last one. So the only two that are increased is the first one and the last one. Otherwise, it's just one in every single stitch. It's one treble. Can you see how you sort of get more of a, it's almost like a fortune cookie shape, isn't it? Because it's forced it upwards slightly, because that's where we want the wings to be. Not got many more to do. There's only one more row after this, to be honest, and then it's about popping on that detail, which is can be the make and break of anything you do make. Sometimes I make something and I'm like, oh, it just doesn't look right. But then as soon as I put the eyes on or I might put a flower on it or something or I stitch another detail on, it just comes to life. So don't be surprised if it sort of doesn't always feel like it's, it's ready or it's done. That's, I do that frequently. Right, we're coming up to that last one, which is a chain. So we need to get into the chain. And we're going to do two, because I said there was just an increase at each end. We are now going to do four chain. One, two, three, and four. Turn our work. We're not going to go into the base this time. We're going to go into the next stitch. And it's going to just be a slip stitch. We're going to do four chain. One, two, three, four. We're going to do a slip stitch into the next stitch. So we're not missing any. So it's one, two, three, four. Slip stitch into the next one. You're going to do that all the way along. One, two, three, four. And slip stitch. My favourite bit coming up. I love doing the details. 
or all this is creating is like a little frill really you could have just done a double crochet round round I keep wanting to call it a round on her row but i just thought a little bit of a frill is always good and this sort of frill could not be easier but it actually looks like you've done quite a bit of work doing it One, two, three, and four. Feels like there's a lot though because you're doing every single stitch. One, oh, nearly. Two, three, and four. Can you see what it's doing? It's just creating like a frilly edge. And it's, it's just a great detail. You can use it for all sorts of things if you're just wanting to sort of edge something to two maybe not three and four into the next one great round scarves one of my favorite things to do around my scarves even though it does take a long time but it's worth it three and four one two three four where is it? There it is. I thought I couldn't find the space. And look, it's split. Can you see I've split? So I'm going to take it out. Do it again. It's not worth it. Two, three, and four. And let me have a look in comparison. I'm going to leave it at that. Right. Snip it off. Can you see how we get a curve there? So it makes the wing a bit nicer to sit on the doll. So if we grab her now, and get her the right way around, ta-da, you can see how the wing will actually sit on her now. So that looks quite cute like that. She still looks very strange in the head department, so I think that is the first thing I'm going to address. Now, I'm saying that, and I've not got my sewing cotton over here, so you might have to bear with me in for a minute. Now, I've decided, because I couldn't find enough pearls to use these little tiny gold beads, you can use whatever you want. And obviously, the two little eyes are for, two little eyes, the two little blue ones are for her eyes. I'm just going to get some sewing cotton to bear with. And it would help if I got a needle as well. Hear me, badly organised today. Some days it works perfectly, other days it's a nightmare. Right, got a selection of needles there. And they've all stuck to each other because they've got magnetised. So I've just got normal sewing cotton. I'm going to use it double thickness though because I don't want the beads to pop off. So I've just folded my cotton in half. Now you need to make sure you've got a sewing needle that's going to go through your individual beads. Some beads have larger holes than others. These aren't too bad. So I can get away with sort of a bog standard. That's if I can thread it. Um, a bog standard uh, sewing needle. There we go. So I'm going to start at the back. And because I've looped it like that, I'm just going to pull it through, push it through the loop and pull it. So that's going nowhere now. So I've not had to make a knot, it's just joined itself. So I'm going to just thread up a load of these beads. I'm hoping the gold's going to show up on her hair. Like I've got more pearls, but I just cannot find them anywhere. So that is why I've had to go with the gold. But the original one actually had little gold ones, so it should show up quite nicely. Let's have a look how we're showing up. Can you see? I think that shows up all right, doesn't it? We just need a few more beads, though. So keep picking them up. They're whizzing around inside this tin. Let's see if that's enough, shall we? anything it wiggles about mm, not quite I made it another five or six something like that we'll go with six two three 
four, five. And obviously quantity is going to depend on the size of your beads. If you're using very small beads, you're going to need a lot more. Oh, I still think I need another two. What am I like? It's took more than the uh, pearls, actually, this. So round, back to the beginning. And all I'm going to do is, because we're going to tighten it up in a second, is just go back into that stitch I went into and pull them all nice and tight. Now, it will just drop off then if you're not careful. So when I'm happy that it's tight enough, I'm just going to tie a little knot to make sure it's not going anywhere. And then I'm going to pop it through the body and up about every third and just stitch them down so you can force them into place then. Now one, two, three, about there will do. Because the yarn goes nicely through so you can't actually see it. So I'm just stitching it slightly into place, well, maybe every three or four. I'm not overly counting it. Right there. I think that looks okay. And we're back to the back. So we have a little crown. I think I actually prefer the pearls. I'm not sure. I think the pearls give it a little bit more bulk. Um, but I don't know, the gold's quite nice. Now, if you had enough sense, like I haven't, you've left the thread long enough, you can then actually just sew the eyes on. But I'm going to have to cut another piece. I'm not going to sew that off yet because uh, I've not decided whether I want to leave them as gold beads. So for the eyes, you only really need single. And again, I've gone for a white because the eyes are blue. If you wish to stitch the eyes on, they're easy enough to do either as well. So I have made a knot this time. I was hoping to have had enough there, but I hadn't. So that's the back. And we're going to go mm, about there. Make sure that's not going to come through now. Because you don't want the eyes dropping off. I'm going over to where I want the other one. Let's have a look where we did those. Mm, that's about the right distance. Ta -da! Just twist the bead round so you can't see the whole of the bead. This little bead's got a little bit on it. And you see how you sometimes get that. So I might not be able to finish it. Because you can see there's a little bit of, I don't know. Oh, no, it's come off. You'll find quite often, because beads are done on a sort of a, a string when they're dyed, or painted or whatever they are and um, you will get a little mark right so we're gonna go through a few times so again I'm not gonna fasten it off I will do that after the fact you don't need to see me doing that but basically I'd tie a little knot and then thread it through and through so that is that part and our last last little bit apart from sewing the wings on is her little mouth again don't need that much I need my wool needle this time and I do need a knot in it Going from the back, I think about the base of her neck. Go about there. Pull it through, make sure it's not going to just pull all the way through. I should have tied those ends off now because they're going to get in my way. And we have a little mouth. And with the mouth, like I would do with any other yarn, I'm just going to push it through. Make sure you don't do it too surface because you don't want it to show through with the white. And through. When you're talking about that, you can just see it there. So just, it does sometimes do it. So you sort of have to give it a, a mush about to sort of remove where it is. So only thing we need now are our wings. Sew in this end and get rid of it. Unlike what I'm doing now. 
we're going to use the one that's in the center I want that to be the front part it's up to you it doesn't really matter you're going to place it in place so I really should have sewn these cards <laughs> ah, I've made my own life more difficult so decide where the center is and all I'm going to do is stitch all the way down to about there to the body leaving these loose they don't need to be too tight so I've just stitched all the way down and leaving those like that so basically that is it that is our little angel I've got some ends to sew in there haven't I so I need to sort it out you know I'm sort of actually getting used to that gold now I think the gold's quite nice I don't know can't make up my mind pearl or gold let me know what you think and so I have two little angels there one is going to be going on my Christmas tree and one of them I will be popping on the site for selling um, and because I've got to start building up a bit of a Christmas side for gifts as well so hopefully you enjoyed that hopefully that end bit made a little bit of sense I hope thank you very much for watching please like subscribe and share I've got some more crochet projects coming up and I will see you very soon bye